Hello everyone, I welcome you all at Paisu's exam prep uh, YouTube platform and uh, learn with fun series. Today's topic is battery charging. So, interestingly, I have learned something new in today's session. I mean, while I was performing this experiment, I got a very interesting point. So, I will, I, I will also tell you about that point. Okay. So, now, first of all, let me tell you the setup and uh, how the battery would charge, I mean, how we are going to charge the battery. I am going to tell you that. So now uh, you can see that uh, this is the battery. First of all, uh, let me explain all these equipments. So this is the battery I have. Okay, It's a 12 volt battery and there are two points. One is positive, this side is positive and this side is negative. Okay. So what I have done is I have connected this positive terminal to the bulb on one side of the bulb and the other side of the bulb is connected to the transformer secondary. Okay, And this side of the battery I am going to connect here. So what you are, go you are going to see is from the secondary side of the transformer this battery is supplied but this battery is not connected directly with the supply of the secondary transformer. What I am doing is I am connected a bulb in the series. This bulb is for the protection. Okay, This bulb is for the protection and what I am going to do is I am directly supplying the AC to the battery. I am not connected any, I have not connected any, any rectifier. So I want to see what will happen if I directly connect the AC supply to the battery, okay? If I don't connect the rectifier in between and then I will connect with the rectifier. Why I will connect the rectifier, I will tell you, okay? So this was about the secondary side of the transformer. Now on the primary side, you can see that again we have this primary side but what I have done is I have connected the supply on the primary side but in series with the bulb, I have connected a bulb again to protect this side. Because if the bulb is connected in series, what will happen? Bulb is kind of a resistance, so it will limit the current. Okay, so to limit the current, I have connected this bulb so that the current cannot exceed its winding current rating limit. Okay, otherwise the winding will get burned. Okay, so that's why I have connected this uh, bulb, and uh, on this side, I have connected a battery in series with this bulb. This bulb is uh, 12 volt. Uh, rate, the rating of this bulb is 12 volt 60 watt so it can handle up to 60 watt and uh, the voltage rating is 12 volt and this battery is again 12 volt uh, this is a step down transformer from 220 to 12 volt it can step down okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try i am trying to charge this battery with the help of ac supply okay let's see what will happen interesting thing will will happen Okay, I have seen two new things in this experiment. What are those two things? Let me show you. First of all, I am not connecting this. Let's say this, this side is open. You can see that. This side is open. This point, one point is connected but the other point is open. It means the secondary side is not connected. It's unloaded transformer. On the primary side, the bulb is connected and uh, you can see that this is the setup. So now on the primary side, uh, this coil and this bulb are in series. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to supply it. I'm going to give the supply on the on the primary side, and you will see that the bulb will not glow. Why it will not glow? Because the voltage across the bulb will be very minute. Maximum voltage will be dropped across the coil, across the winding of the transformer. Okay. Across that coil, maximum voltage will be utilized, and the voltage across the bulb will be very less. That's why the bulb will not glow. There will be small current that will flow via this because that exciting current has to flow, no load current has to flow in the transformer because the secondary side is unloaded. So let's see. So what I'm going to do is I have connected the supply, variable supply. So I'm going to increase the supply. You can see that. I'm going to increase and let's make it to maybe 150. Okay. Let's make it to 150 volt. Okay. So on 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 the primary side, I have given the supply to 150 volt and you can see that this bulb is not glowing but there is a current flowing okay current is flowing 0 0.03 ampere is current flowing okay so this is the exciting current this current is used to uh, set up the flux in this transformer on the secondary side of the transformer you will get some volt maybe 8 volt or, or so okay because at 230 volt it will give you 12 volt it means it's not 230 it's 150 so at 150 volt it will give you less than 12 volt approximately 8 volt it, it will provide but i have not connected any load on the secondary side and you can see that on the primary side i have connected this 150 volt and the current is 0 0.03 ampere now what i'm going to do is on the secondary side on the secondary side i'm going to connect the battery 
Okay, I'm going to connect the battery along with the with the bulb in series. Interesting things will happen. Let's see. Okay, so this is the one point I have already connected. Okay, one point of the transformer I have already connected via this bulb to the battery positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. And I am not connecting the rectifier. Remember, I am not connecting the rectifier. You can see that as I connect it, interesting things are happening. This bulb started glowing, okay, and this bulb is also glowing. And look at the current on this side. The current on this side is 0.27 ampere. I am connecting it. I am connecting it DC supply on the secondary side. I am connecting it DC supply on the secondary side. Imagine, and you can see that the current on the primary side has increased to 0.27 ampere. How it is one? How it is happening like this? It's very interesting. Moreover. This battery is not charging; it's actually discharging. The battery is discharging. Why I have connected this bulb? The reason is if I have not connected the bulb, this battery will get short circuited via the secondary side of the transformer. Via the secondary coil of the transformer, this battery will get short circuited and it will burn. That's why to protect this battery, I have connected a bulb in series. And you can see that this bulb is glowing. This bulb is glowing only because of DC supply. On the secondary side, you are not getting any AC supply. You don't believe me? You are not getting any AC supply. I'll I'll prove you. I will tell you why you are not getting AC supply on the on the secondary side. This secondary side is this transformer is not working now. On the primary side, it's 0.26 ampere. Current has increased drastically, increased from 0 to 0.03 ampere to 0.26 ampere. And on the secondary side, now you are not getting any AC supply. Only DC supply is there, and this battery is actually discharging. This battery is actually discharging, and the power of the battery is consumed in its internal resistance and in this bulb. How it is happening? Why the secondary side is not getting any AC supply in, in this particular case, and why this bulb is glowing now? Think about it. Please pause this video and ponder about it. Now I am going to explain it. Battery is not charging, so this is not a charging circuit. So you cannot provide direct supply to the battery. If you are doing the step down, uh, if let's say the supply is step down, and then what you are doing is you are supplying that that step down supply to the battery. If you are connecting the battery directly, the battery will get burned. It will be because enormous amount of current will flow. To protect this battery, I have connected this bulb so that this bulb can handle that current and it can stop the current uh, from increasing uh, one limited value. Okay, that's why I have connected this bulb. If I if I have not connected this bulb, this battery will be gone. It will be short circuited by the secondary side of the transformer. Okay. Now the thing is, the, the thing is, why it is happening? Generally, we have studied that. Generally, we have studied that if you connect the DC supply on any side of the transformer, that DC supply will not be get transferred on the other side. You must have studied that. But here in this experiment, you have seen. That this bulb is glowing. If I connect the DC supply on the secondary side, the bulb is glowing on the primary side. Why it is happening like that? It's very interesting. It is because of saturation. It is because of saturation. Okay. Now let's come here. Let me let me show you saturation effect. This is the BH curve or flux versus current curve. Now what you are doing is you are providing on the secondary side. On the secondary side, you are providing this DC current. Very large DC current, approximately 5 ampere of DC current is flowing. I will measure it if you want. Okay, I have already measured it. So this is very large current on the secondary side, 5 ampere. Because of this 5 ampere, this core, transformer core is saturated. The transformer core is saturated. Now on the prime, now on the primary side you have connected AC supply. Because of the AC supply, the AC current will also come into picture. Now, because of this AC current, the AC current, this AC current, the flux will not change. Why? Because the over, the Q point is, is is saturated. This this point is under saturation region. The transformer core is saturated. Okay. And if you apply this AC current, okay, if you apply this AC current, nothing will happen at this point. The flux will not change. You can see that the variation will be from this point to this point. Okay. So flux will not change because flux is already saturated. So now, what is happening is the core of the transformer gets saturated. 
Now come, come here. This was the circuit. If I don't connect the, the battery on this side, let's say the DC battery is not connected. This is the battery. If I have not connected it. Now, if I if you have not connected it, then what is happening is if you connect the supply of 150 volt, if you connect the supply of 150 volt, the maximum voltage will be utilized here and very less voltage will be here. And the current will be very small because of the internal impedance of this bulb and this and this. Okay. So you can say 0 .0, uh, 0 0.03 ampere was flowing if I not connect the battery. Now if I connect the battery here, if I connect the battery here, what will happen? There is a constant current DC. There is a constant DC current which is flowing like this. And because of that DC current, because of that DC current, what is happening? Because of the DC current, this core gets saturated. The flux is not changing now. If the flux is not changing, the induced voltage will become zero. You can see that this induced voltage is zero, this induced voltage is also zero. Now, if this voltage is zero, if this voltage is zero, the voltage across these two points is zero, it means the entire supply voltage is utilized in this bulb and internal impedance of the coil. That's why the bulb started growing and the current value has increased. Why the current value has increased? Because the impedance, this, this part is sorted now. Okay, this part is sorted. So the, the impedance of this path is only this bulb and this, this resistance and this leakage reactance. That's why this current has increased. So you can see that if I connect and the, the battery will not get charged. Why not get charged? Because this voltage is also zero. This E2 will also get zero, zero value. Why? Why this E2 is zero? Because the change in flux is zero. That's why E2 will also be zero. That's why on the secondary side, you will not get any AC voltage. You will not get any AC voltage on the secondary side. On the secondary side, you have this DC source and this is sorted. So the internal impedance of the coil is there and the current will flow only because of the DC battery. So battery is actually got discharged. It will be discharged in the bulb. I have connected a bulb here. If I have, if I have not connected the bulb, then what will happen? Then this impedance is not that much large. If I have not connected any bulb, this is sorted, this is sorted, because of this low impedance of this coil, of this transformer coil, uh, the secondary side transformer coil, because of the low impedance, this battery will get short circuited. This impedance will be very, enormous amount of current will flow, enormous amount of current will flow and it will damage the battery, because there is an internal loss in the battery. So, don't try to connect the battery directly to the transformer, never connect it. Generally what students think, they think that why don't I step down the voltage to 12 volt or 15 volt and then I directly give the supply to the battery. No, you can't do that. Actually it will discharge the battery. Okay. Now what I need to do here, what I need to do here, I need to connect a rectifier. I need to connect a rectifier then only, then only you can charge the battery. Okay, you have to connect this rectifier. I have designed a bridge rectifier here. You can see that this is the bridge rectifier. So I have connected the secondary of the transformer here in, the, in these two points. And then these two points will give me, uh, the, the supply is connected at these two points and the output will be taken from these two points. This, these two points will be connected to the battery. Then only the battery will get charged. Then only the battery will be, will, uh, will get charged. Okay, battery will uh, store some charge and the charging will happen okay so remember this point guys this is very important now theoretically theoretically let's say you have ac source and the dc internal battery let's say okay this is the dc battery you can represent you can represent the battery like this and this is the ac source so actually theoretically i'm showing this ac source but practically this source will, will, will go if you connect the transformer like this and you connect a battery here, this, this source E2 e will, be, will be zero. It means no AC source will be available on the secondary side. If you connect a DC, so DC supply on the secondary side, okay? But theoretically, let's assume that this is the pure AC source and this is the battery. Now in this circuit, there are two, two types of two current. One is DC current, one is AC current. This is the AC current and this is the DC current. DC current will flow in opposite direction. So it, that's why I have taken negative here, okay? So this is the net current. Now, because of this current, this source will also supply power, this source will also supply power and entire power will be absorbed by this internal resistance. It means the battery will not get charged here. The entire power will be dissipated in the internal resistance of the battery, battery will get damaged. If you connect the direct AC like this, don't do that. This is the theoretical situation. 
But practically, what will happen? Practically, this source will, will not be there. This source will go go away because of the saturation effect. Okay, so I hope you understood this. This is the practical situation, and this is the effect of saturation and how the battery charge will, battery charging will happen. Now, to charge the battery, I have to connect a rectifier. I have to connect a rectifier. The rectifier will do the process. The rectifier will charge the battery. Okay, so I hope you understood why I need to connect a rectifier. If I connect a rectifier, let's say I connect a rectifier here. Okay. If I connect a rectifier, then at the output of the rectifier, let's say I connect a bridge rectifier, the output of the rectifier is like this. It's, it's not AC. It's like, like this something. Okay? And it has some DC component. It has some DC component. That is 2 mm by 5. Because of this DC component, because of the DC component of the voltage, the DC current will flow through the battery. Obviously, this DC component of, the, of this supply has to be greater than this E naught. Then only the current will flow in this direction. And the current is flowing in this direction. What will happen? Battery will get power. Battery will charge. Okay? So that's why to charge a battery, I need to connect a rectifier in the circuit. Okay? So guys, this was about charging a battery. And uh, with this experiment, I hope you understood how the saturation effect is there. Why the transformer's primary side will 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 get higher current? Uh, the, the higher current will flow if you connect a battery on the secondary side. Okay, so this experiment was interesting. I hope you enjoyed. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and like this video. It is again, please um, share this video to your friends also. And uh, that's all. Thank you, and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.